Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Trekking the National Parks, the board game. In the game Tracking the National, National Parks, you're going to be playing two to five players, about 30 to 60 minutes, and from ages 10 and up. You're going to go from national park to national park, trying to acquire stones, showing you visit those parks, as well as visiting the larger national parks. Now, if you may visit, visit the major ones and you gain control of those guys, you can get some kind of bonus throughout the game. And if you can acquire the ones specifically required for you to gain, to gain points, you can get the game to be ending at about five of them. Once five have been collected, the game will end and whoever has the most points is the winner. But it's not important to just gain those parks, you have to also gain stones, because whoever has the most of specific bonuses are going to gain points as well. Anyway, that's the basic idea of the game. Travel as far as you can. Mensa Select winner, let's go and see if it was gained, if it gained the award fairly, based on my very important review back on the table where I'll show you the entire game. So here we have the game Trekking the National Forest and everything that's gonna be included in it. As you can see, there's gonna be a big board here along with all these different stones. You're going to have your own character meeples that are pretty big here, as well as your own little houses here you'll be utilizing throughout the game. It's gonna come with the larger major parks here, such as the Grand Canyon, the Everglades, uh, Yellowstone National Park, so on and so forth. And you'll also be utilizing things like stones uh, at the end of the game for a victory points. When you play a two-player game, you're not going to use the second place ones. When you're playing anything more, you are, and that's going to give you more bonus points throughout the game. You're also going to be getting the National Parks cards. These are all the smaller parks that you'll be utilizing. Whoever gets five of these is going to end the game, and that's how points will be tallied afterwards. And each of these is worth points, as well as it's going to take a certain amount of cards in order to obtain them. Well, what cards are you talking about? Well, you can have these cards here, and they're all going to have different symbols on them. Whether you're going to use them as their symbol, or whether you're going to use them as a move card, is dependent upon what you want to do, but you can utilize these cards by spending them to move your pawn around the board, thusly being able to get to the parks you need to get to. When you land on a specific space, you're going to score that specific token there, and you're also then going to be able to purchase the specific uh, national park provided it's out there for you to get. It has a similar quality to a game like Ticket to Ride, but it has its own unique features as well. And not only that, it also comes with a little brown bear to let you know who's the first player. Super cute! Alright, I'll go ahead and down, take, take you down below and show you a couple turns of play, and then we'll talk about what I think about trekking. The national parks. So here's the game Trekking the National Parks. It's all set up. All of these have been distributed randomly, all these little pieces. You're gonna put them in this bag over here and just pull it out and you're just going to put them all randomly. You're also going to go ahead and set up three major parks and three national parks here as well as in a two-player game you're going to include just these gold ones but in any more than that three, four, or five you're gonna include these yellow ones which is basically whoever has second place for the different colors. They're gonna have four of these things here which are basically just symbols that have different numbers on them which will allow you to move around the park and you're going to give every single player two of these cards here which are going to basically be these cards here on your turn you're simply going to be taking actions and those actions can be pulling from here pulling from here uh, moving onto spaces collecting these things here as well as uh, spending the required currency of these cards from your hand in order to obtain national parks when you do that you're going to put out a new national park and the person who had this card the cards that are required for this one are going to gain this card and its victory points uh, the game is going to end when five of these cards have been taken and put into a player's tableau or uh, when all of these tokens here have been uh, taken off of the board. Over here you're going to go ahead and see all of the different characters set up for the players of uh, this five player game here uh, but however many players you're not going to use you just take off the rest of these guys here and then you're just going to simply start taking your turns. You can use these cards here like I said before to move around the board and you can discard them and then move spaces so you can move one two and three. There's specific amounts of actions you can take and specific things you can do with those actions such as ending your turn on a specific space and taking a stone and if you're making it to a specific park like let's say you need to get to Sha uh Choyanga Valley. You'll have to look on the board around here uh, and find out that specific location. And then you're also going to have to have the specific cards in order to acquire this location. There, all of these locations are in the deck. And then of course, all of the ones that have a red symbol on them are going to be the major parks. And major parks not only are going to give you points and don't count towards the ending goal of the game, but they will give you a specific ability. And it's going to be located down here on the bottom left-hand corner of the card. As you can see, 
see here, it has a specific symbol that works for each of these national parks. You're only going to use three of them, the rest will go away. And that is the basic idea of the game. Collecting the different pieces here to end the game by collecting all of them, or simply having somebody get five. Once somebody gets five parks, or all these pieces get selected, you're going to simply take uh, all of these cards and uh, place them out so that everybody can see them, and whoever has the most of the yellow is going to score seven points, red is six, black is five, so on and so forth. And then second place will also occur in a three, four, or five player game. Whoever has the most points all together is going to be the winner of the game trekking the national parks. A pretty simple game, similar to games like Ticket to Ride and others that uh, involve taking cards from a specific banked area and um, trying to use them to gain specific objectives as well as specific stones. So a quick explanation too. Basically you're going to be able to take two actions on your turn and there are four different actions total that you can take. The first action is to simply drawing a card that's already face up over there or simply drawing one from the top of the deck. They're going to be these cards over here. The next action you can take is simply to move. You can discard as many cards from your hand as you'd like, add the numerical value up, and move your pawn in that many spaces. So if I wanted to I could discard this one card here and move my character one space. I'd be actually moving the blue one here though. Uh, Whenever you land on a space, you gain one of these guys here, and you would use that card up. Uh, then your next action you could choose to do is claim. Now you can choose to claim a national park, which is one of these guys here, or a major national park, and the cost is associated on those cards. Move, and those are the four basic actions. Move, collect, and then claim and claim. Now the other things that are interesting about this game is when you move, you are blocking the pathway for another character. So if this character wanted to go over here, or over here, he wouldn't be able to get there unless he went a different route because this character has been moved there. But what he can do is he actually move on top of that player, and if he does that, he's going to send that character back. However, that would be one movement and it would consist, cons consist of one action. So that is important. You cannot move past a player, but you can land on them regardless of where they are on the board and send them all the way back to the starting location. That's the basic idea of the game, moving around the board, collecting the pebbles, try trying to gain points that way, as well as gaining the parks. If there's five, if somebody has eventually, uh, they're going to gain five, then that is going to end the game there. And the player who has the most points, including the park points and as well as the gem points, is going to win, right? So what do I think about the game trekking in the national parks? Well, this game reminds me simply of Ticket to Ride. I know I've stated this before when we were talking about the game, but it has that feeling. Instead of actually building trains, though, you are simply moving moving around from park to park across the entire United States, visiting them. It has a historical significance, and it's kind of nice learning about the different parks, where they're located, and now I know uh, when I, next time I show up in Florida, I want to go ahead and visit the Everglades. I didn't even know they were there. Wow. So that is useful. It's also a game that is very similar in fact that families can play this game very easily with kids. It provides a spirit of uh, competitiveness, but not to the point where it's too demanding. Now, it can be a little uh, gritty when you're walking into somebody's space and they have to go all the way back to the start space, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be a good move for you, and it also doesn't mean it's going to be a bad move for them. Maybe they need to get across the country and you just help them out, help them out. You don't always want to go for one specific victory condition. You maybe want to get pebbles at one point, and then maybe you want to switch to the parks. Maybe you want to use the national forests, uh, the, big, the big ones, those major ones, because then they'll give you abilities. Your just objective is to have the most victory points, regardless of when the game ends, however you possibly can. All the components are very, very nice and very, very family friendly, and uh, they're even extra thick and big for little kids, which is very nice, and I, I feel like this would be a great family game for most people. I think that if you like Ticket to Ride, you're going to enjoy trekking the national parks, and if you have uh, any interest in this type of theme, this is definitely one that I haven't seen before, and I really do really, I really do enjoy the game. There's a reason why it has awards on the box, it's because it's really, really fun. If you're interested in a family game, definitely don't forget to check out Trekking at the National Parks, the board game. I do highly recommend this game, and suggest you take a look at it in the description below. Alright, that's all I got for you for this one, and as always, I'll see you next time.